Hello, kidney warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is Dadvice TV Live. I want to welcome everyone that's new. If you are new, go ahead and say new in the comments and introduce yourself. Let everyone know. Do you have kidney disease or do you have a friend or a loved one who has it? Or are you just trying to learn about it? Maybe it's your career that you're going into and you want to help kidney patients learn how to kick kidney disease to the curb, which is what we do here. Now, for those of you that are new, let me introduce myself. I am James. I'm not a doctor. I'm nothing special. I'm just a regular person like you. Almost two years ago, coming up next month, November, I went to the ER where I spent a week in the ICU. And besides getting a gigantic medical bill, I got some bad news. I had kidney issues. Matter of fact, I had kidney failure, stage five. Well, while I was there, doctors got my GFR up and stable to 13, a lucky number for me. And they told me, James, that's as good as it's going to get. You need dialysis. And we're going to get you on a transplant list. Well, I started doing some research and I thought, you know what? I'm not sure I'm ready for dialysis yet. I think it's a little bit too early. And now that I know I have kidney problems, let me try some things. So I worked with a number of doctors and renal dietitians, and I learned how to be healthier. There's no magic pill, no magic cure, but I started to improve my symptoms started getting less. They eventually went away as my GFR, which they told me 13 is as good as it's going to get, went all the way up. My last labs, 33. But most importantly, I don't suffer a single symptom anymore. I am full of energy and love in life. Now, my kidneys, they're no better than what they were. They didn't magically heal themselves. There's no magic pill, no magic formula to repair the physical damage. But there are things that you can do to improve your overall health and reduce some of the burden that you place on your kidneys so that you can have a much better quality of life. And we're gonna talk about one of those things, probably the single most important thing that you have full control over. Today, we're gonna talk about diet. What can you eat? What should you eat? What's going to help you to improve your overall health? Now, there's no foods. You can read websites and they claim there are, but there are no single foods that you eat this special kind of grape or this or that, and your kidneys are going to get better. But by making the right choices and better understanding how diet impacts your health, you have an opportunity to try and improve. All right. Now with us today, you guys know him. He's been here several times. He's going to keep being here a lot more. The author of Learn the Facts About Kidney Disease. And you guys, if you don't have this book, you're going to want it. Let me throw a link up here at the top. This is the direct link to Amazon. You can go on Amazon, get a copy of this book. If you do not have it and you have kidney disease, you want this book. And there's going to be a, another book coming out in the near future from Dr. Rowe. Okay, Dr. Rowe is the short version of his name, the author of the book, and he is here with us. Hello, Dr. Rowe. Hello, James. Good to see you. Hey, it looks like I got air. It looks like it looks like I got earrings on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never I've never used these headphones. I guess we could tell your audience that we had a little technical difficulty. <laughs> But uh, James, James made me aware, I had no clue, that my MacBook Pro has a place to plug in headphones. Thank you, James. And I found this old pair of headphones that I've never used. They do look like earrings or, or a stethoscope. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's like a, a stethoscope, a, a modern skinny one. Now, for those people who are here that are new, tell them who you are, a little bit about your past so they know that you're someone to listen to? Well, I am a retired kidney specialist. I've spent over 40 years taking care of kidney patients. I started the kidney program at the University of South Carolina School of Medicine in Columbia, South Carolina. I started the dialysis, dialysis and kidney program at the VA. 
I've done extensive amount of research in addition to patient care. I have over 100 articles published, and some of my articles have been widely recognized across the world and um, as being game changers in the field of nephrology. And uh, because of my interest in, in some issues in, like when to start dialysis, where I've published extensively, uh, I decided that I needed to get this information out to patients and help patients that are very confused about kidney disease. I don't know how many of you got to hear our talk on CKD3. Hopefully those of you who have not heard it will uh, go and find it on James' uh, website. Um, and, you know, a lot of people worry unnecessarily about the kidney disease, and I'm here to tell you what's fact, what's fiction, what you need to worry about, what you don't need to worry about. And today we're going to talk about what I call my smart diet for kidney disease. And yeah. uh, <laughs> the first thing people will ask me is, what is the smart diet? Do you have a trademark? <laughs> have you got, do you, do you have, how, how smart? How smart is it? Can I find this in, in a textbook? Well, uh, let me, uh, as we say when we're talking about food, let me set the table, if that's okay with you, James. Oh, yeah, yeah, certainly. <laughs> so, in our last talk about stage 3 CKD, I told you why all these stages were created, and one of the main reasons why anyone should know that they've got let's say, an EGFR of 40 to 60, which is, by and large, nothing to worry about. But it is a risk factor for hardening of the arteries, atherosclerotic heart disease, and potentially that can contribute to early death. So, like any other risk factor, you want to do things that you can to change that situation. <clears throat> and part of the changing the situation is your diet. Mm -hmm. Now your diet has been emphasized in books, diet books, doctor's books, all kinds of books. And there's only one thing, almost only focusing on the diet and protein intake. And we're going to mm -hmm. dig into that a little bit. And I'll tell you why that's only a small part of the smart diet. Why is it a smart diet? <clears throat> Because this smart diet, in addition to the lifestyle changes that you need to make to decrease your risk of hardening of the arteries, which can lead to potential heart attacks, strokes, limb loss, you know, bad things, is part of that whole lifestyle change. Blood pressure control, diabetes control, cholesterol control, exercise, big, big, big. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into that a little bit with diet. Um, the smart diet that we're going to talk about today is not magic. It's a plant-based diet. And what this diet is going to do for you, it will help you live longer. It may slow your kidney decline. Mm -hmm. It will decrease your irritable bowel syndrome. It'll decrease your diabetes problems. It'll decrease your blood pressure. And this is all natural foods. It'll decrease your risk of colon cancer all kinds of good stuff. That's why it's a smart diet. And it's smart in the sense that you're not going to obsess with what I see online and a lot of folks say, oh, yeah. oh protein, it's toxic. I ate protein. I'm going to die. My kidneys are going to fail. Oh, I ate less protein and my kidney number went from 44 to 48. That is not any change as we discussed last time. Yep. These Your kidney GFR numbers is going balance. to change naturally within a range. And, and I see the same things online where people, they're reading what others are echoing, which isn't based on really anything. Stay away from protein. Avoid all protein. Um, I even see people who are afraid of like a banana or other fruits and vegetables and they don't even think they can add a little avocado to their diet. And they think if they touch an avocado, they're going to like burn or something <laughs> like that and go up and smoke. <laughs> well, I'm going to start out dealing with something that I think will make a lot of people happy. Maybe even James. I don't want to get personal. Oh, it's easy to I'm get good. me happy. <laughs> I'm always happy. I'm Mr. Positive. 
All right, well, let's talk about calories, talk about weight loss, talk a little, this is a little bit about obesity. I got to listen here because I need the weight loss. I'm okay. not doing good with COVID. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to enjoy this. I got some good, good news. First of all, calories. Don't get hung up on calories. Calories are so hard to determine. It depends on the individual. For example, you, James, may eat something and you will burn X amount of calories or you will produce X amount of calories, food, calories, energy. I may eat the same thing and I'll produce 10 to 20 percent less calories. Why is that? There's many factors. One is what's inside of your gut. There's billions of these microorganisms mm. called your microbiome. Yep. You may have a different size gut than me. So there's all kinds of things that can affect uh, what, um, what kind of calories you're going to get from food. But here's the biggest message. This is great. There was a study just came out in 2020 from Sweden. Leave it to the Scandinavian countries. They do great studies. They can get their people to latch on to long-term studies and follow them. And here's what they did. They looked at the effect of the Mediterranean diet. And we'll get into that. It's basically a plant-based diet. Yep. And, it, and it's plant-based diet, more olive oil, more olives, you know, maybe some red wine, garlic, and so forth. But it's this plant-based diet, simple mm -hmm. and straightforward. And they looked at the survival of the folks that followed the plant-based diet, and they looked at the folks that didn't. And guess what? If you were obese and followed the plant-based diet, you lived just as long as the person who was skinny and did not follow the plant-based mm. diet. So it's not all in the calories, and it's not all about your BMI. A lot of what you can do is control what goes in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we should all attempt, if you are overweight, especially if you're morbidly overweight, to lose weight. And But we got to understand our body's smart. When we try to change something in what we call homeostasis, the stability of our bodies, things going on, the body's going to react. So if you lose weight, you go on a good diet, guess what? Your metabolism is going to slow down. It's going, your body's going to try to get that weight back up. They don't know. Your body doesn't know, hey, this guy wants to lose weight, so let me, rapid, let me increase his metabolic rate. No, your metabolism goes down. It is very hard to lose weight. Not that you shouldn't try, but I'll tell you, if you do take on what we're going to discuss today, the SMART diet, you will lose weight. And if you really want to lose weight, you have to exercise because yeah. your metabolism is going to go down as your diet. You're going to gain the weight back. And only one out of five people maintains weight loss over 10 years. It is very hard. I sympathize with anyone who's trying to lose weight, but don't be depressed. It's not the only thing. There's a lot more issues in the smart diet that we need to discuss. Yeah, and when it comes to weight, since working from home, I used to travel. Mm -hmm. I used to be up in front of people, running around, doing stuff, talking. I'm a very animated person. I'm not a person who likes to sit. Um, now, I sit all the time. All day, I get up, my watch tells me, and I try to walk around a little bit in the house in between meetings, but I'm not getting the exercise. I've, oh, I've cut way back, and it's made it so easy to now gain back some of the weight that I worked so hard to lose, uh, but I'm still positive. I know the weather's getting cooler. I can go out and walk more at night. I'm going to get my exercise on. The wife and I are ordering a treadmill. We're going to put it in the living room. So when I take breaks, I can watch Netflix and just walk at a, a calm, relaxing pace. Just get a little bit of exercise in. Um, but diet, for those of you out there who are thinking like, ah, oh, I don't know about diet. Is it, how important is it? It is the one thing is kidney patients we control 100% of. There's so much control that we kind of lose with our kidney disease, but with diet, we are the ones that get to make those choices. And that's really what it comes down to is making better choices, learning what you can to help you 
make those right choices. And the impact, you know, I wasn't a huge believer in diet. I always thought of it only as weight loss, but it has done so much for me to improve my energy, my quality of life and learning what to eat and how to eat has made it to where I enjoy food again. Unlike when I was first diagnosed, I was afraid of everything. Now, I'm not afraid of anything. It's portion control and kind of making good choices here and there. It almost seems so easy. I wish I would have known this when I was younger, just to live healthier and feel the way I feel now due to diet. Well, let me, as uh, I'm, I'm going to assume I'm James' uh, doctor, and he just told me that story. James, I agree with everything you said, but James, there's no excuse for not getting exercise. Exercise, like <laughs> exercise is the key to longevity. It is the key to long life, good brain health, and good body health. Mm -hmm. So I will never make allow anybody to make it you can find a way to do exercise even lockdown with covid okay <laughs> yeah and, and, and it's me being kind of getting used yeah. to being um lazy in a way yeah, yeah um one of the things my doctor told me to do he says the exact same thing he's like i, I don't want to hear it there are no excuses he's like how many bathrooms do you have in your house? I tell him, he goes like, when, you, when you're in your office and you need to go to the restroom, which bathroom do you go to? I go, oh, there's one right next door. He goes, I want you to go to the furthest one. You're gonna walk to the furthest one and then walk back whenever you gotta go. Uh, whenever you can, just get up and walk. Don't sit down on the sofa to take a break. Just walk around your house. Maybe you need to pick yeah. some things up. Go do something, move, there's no excuse. Yeah. So yeah. it's me. I, I agree 100%. Um, I was so good at exercise and I just allowed myself to kind of get out of it. And there was always an excuse. You know, I allowed myself to pick these excuses and, and allow them to hold me back. And it has, it hasn't hurt me that I can tell, except that I've gained back quite a bit yeah. of weight, but I'm now focused on getting rid of it. And I've, right. I've, I've even told the wife, no more snacks around the house. I, I can't have them. The temptation's just too great. When I'm walking through the kitchen and there's a big old thing of M&Ms or some candy corn or something, or they're, they're cooking up a bunch of extra pasta, and I'm just like, oh, I'll have a little bit. Oh, it adds yeah. up. <laughs> so, all right, so I set the table, James, and yep. uh, we're going we're gonna to break it down by the components of the diet. <clears throat> The first thing, let's just be broad about what you're going to be wanting to eat. You want a rainbow. You want a rainbow. Very important. If you're looking at your plate and you don't have a rainbow, you're not doing good. Most of the stuff we eat, what James just talked about, we eat processed foods. Oh, yeah. Stay away from the fast foods. Stay away from the processed foods. What do we mean by processed foods? Natural foods have color. Processed foods make it easier for us to digest. They're the white flour, all the white bread, the pizzas, the muffins, uh, the you know pastas. Mm -hmm. You want things with color. You want things with fiber. Fiber is one of the keys <laughs> For your diet, the fiber has probably the most impact, and anything with plants has fiber. You want to eat beans for your kidney beans. Beans are great. Anything with fiber, fruits and vegetables and plants are great. Um, and the fiber will help diabetes, will help constipation, help decrease colon cancer risk. So um, you want to avoid unprocessed you want you want to avoid the processed stuff you want to avoid the things that you can get in a fast food place if you do that you're on your way and then you want to substitute that kind of stuff for stuff with fiber what is fiber going to do for you fiber takes energy to digest fiber will get you full quickly what's the thing that most people eat that is the worst thing for you sodas we get these oh. big, big sodas. And what do you do when you get a big soda? You may have a half a gallon of sugar water 
and your brain has no response to that. It's not a response. It's a useless calorie. All you've done is take in, you know, 100 calories or more for nothing. It has no benefit. Rot your teeth. Um, yeah, and I used to be one of those heavy <laughs> soda drinkers. I gave it up now. It's all just water. Yeah. And I, since I, I don't like plain water, I add... Um, like lemon, raspberry, strawberries. There's a, a, a dehydrated version of the fruits that I buy. Doesn't have extra stuff in there. And I add it there. Give it just a little bit of taste. Plus lemon's good for me. I need some more lemon. I love it. <laughs> so um, it, let's just briefly talk about labels. I don't, know, I don't know if you do it, James, or anyone looks at the labels on food. Oh, when you look at when, when you look at the label on the food, don't go crazy over it because it's pretty useless. Why is it useless? Because it's assuming that you eat 2,000 calories a day. What do normal you Americans eat? 4,000 calories a day. But it'll, the label will give you a general idea of the food that you're buying. Does it have added sugar? Almost everything you're going to buy has added sugar. Garbage. You want to look at how much fiber is in it. You want to make sure it doesn't have saturated fat. And you want to just get an idea of protein and fiber. That's important. Now, um, so you want to have food with multiple colors. You want to eat foods that are with skin on them. You want to eat mm -hmm. foods that are hard to digest, which will fill you up quickly, will make you lose weight and have all kinds of benefits. Now, should you eat fats? Well, yeah, you have to eat fats. You have to have proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. You can't do without any one of the three things. But you want to stay away from the processed foods, the cornbread, the bagels, the cakes, the processed meat. You want to stay away from that stuff. Now, James mentioned avocados, great source mm -hmm. of fats. You want to get the omega-3 fats. Dark chocolate is great. Peanut butter is, is great. Low-fat dairy is fine. So um, you'll get your carbs from fruits and vegetables. That's the best way to get carbs. Not from most of the foods we eat. Almost everything you buy has added sugar. So try to eat as much of the natural foods as you can. Now, let's touch on the protein story because this is what everybody obsesses about. Yep. Um, there's any, the books you buy. First of all, before I go into the books you buy and protein, there are so many diet books. You don't have to buy them, folks. Go look online. I just did it five minutes ago. Look online for, for recipes for kidney patients. Every kidney organization around the world, including yep, the one. dialysis companies, will put out reams and reams of diets and, and, and not diets, and, and recipes, recipes for yep. you. It's free. You don't have to buy the diet yeah, and on dadvicetv.com and... there's a link for recipe websites that are free and all i did was i started searching for all the big dialysis centers all the big organizations throughout the united states and then all the english-speaking countries australia new zealand uk canada and then i started looking at like dallas is there a dallas nephrology website oh there is look they have a section with recipes all free on there and they list all the different ingredients and everything and tell you what the you know kind of they tell you what the label would look like if this was a processed product but of course you get to make it yourself and there's something you don't like you could do a little substitution in there and that's what i've been using in the beginning i bought lots of recipe books and i was using some of them but i realized there's so many more free on the internet <laughs> So let's kind of go a little bit through protein. I'm gonna, we're going to have another uh, program, James, where we're going to talk about what really works to slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's coming function. up in November. I'm going to dig in more deeply on the on the protein issue then. But let me just give you a ballpark as we're setting the table today. So, on average, Americans we eat about 100 grams of protein a day. Now. It's reasonable, and my smart diet is relatively low in protein. If you start eating plant-based diet, and you limit your intake of red meat, and you have poultry without the skin, take the skin off, 
you're going to have a lower protein intake, much lower than the 100 grams. Takes, you know, a couple of steaks or burgers and, you know, to, to quickly go into high protein diet. Why is high protein not good? High protein, there's a lot of research evidence that high protein makes your kidneys overwork. And in animal models, you could see when you put them on high protein, it will start damaging the, the nephrons, the little units of the kidney. Mm -hmm. So that's been demonstrated. And, and James, there's been a lot of attempt to prove the benefit of low protein diets to slow the decline of kidney function. I will tell you that the evidence is not overwhelming. There is evidence, but it's not overwhelming. On the other hand, you might as well, you know, place your bet and take a, a lower protein diet because we know the higher protein is probably not good for you. So what's lower protein? First of all, if you're diabetic, all of the organizations that I know of, the, the kidney doctor organizations, they do not want you to go on the low protein, very low protein diet, because that could be dangerous for diabetics. Mm -hmm. So That's diabetics, right. they're recommending it's a 0.8 uh, 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 grams per, per kilogram. So, so let me, let me, we deal in the U.S. with pounds. So basically it's about 0.36 uh, grams per pound. So if you, weigh 100 pounds, which nobody does, that's 36 grams of protein. Let's say a lot of us are 200 pounds, that would be 70 grams of protein. Yep. Recommended, as opposed to 100. That's reasonable. Getting And if you get down to 60, that would be relatively low. I'm good with that. The low, the very low protein diets are gonna be half that. They're almost imp impossible, they're not palatable, and they could frankly be dangerous because they can cause you to get malnutrition. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that as your kidney disease progresses, your nutritional state declines. And if you're an older person, your nutritional state declines with age. It is very dangerous, in my opinion, for an older person to, to be pushing a low protein diet for those folks, because I think that that can result in them having falls, breaking their bones, mm -hmm. decreasing muscle that already disappears with age. So I don't recommend it for them. But the SMART diet is relatively low in protein because it's plant-based. So that's the first thing you want to. And, and where do you uh, get uh, things that are good in this diet? And when you can get the protein, you want nuts, you want seeds, you want beans. These are all good as protein sources. Um, as far as fat, let's kind of touch on fat and cholesterol. Yep. A lot of people obsessed with cholesterol. And let me tell you right from this, the get-go, you've got kidney disease, we already discussed it. It's a risk factor for atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. If you've got one of those risk factors, you need to be on a lipid drug to get your LDL below 100, and if you're diabetic, below 60. And there's recent discussion of even getting it lower. So those lipid drugs, those statins, they are mm -hmm. probably something that you should be on if you've got certainly 3B, which is EGFR, we discussed this last week, of 30 yep. to 45, and maybe even 3A, 45 to 60, and certainly CKD4 and CKD5. So um, you want to try to have low fat or non-fat uh, dairy. You want to have lean meat. You want to take the skin off and um, you don't have to give up all meat. You can eat some meat, but guess what? There's stuff that tastes just like meat. I don't know if James has tried. I did. It's called tofu and tofu. Okay, good. I'm glad that's why you, I was thinking like, I hope it's not those fake meats, the impossible I, 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 uh, I, I, I will, with sodium. I won't get into that tonight, <laughs> and, but that's, that'll be for another discussion, but you can have, Fake bacon, fake chicken, and it tastes like the real thing. I eat bean burgers all the time. I love that stuff. So, um, so that's there's plenty of things that you can substitute for your meat if you're willing to eat soy products. And you go to the to the freezer cabinet of any uh, grocery store, you'll see all kinds of things, and you will be surprised 
just how good this stuff tastes. Now, Gary here um, asked yeah. a great question. What about yeah. fish? So we, you mentioned like chicken without the skin. What about fish? I get that. I get asked that all the time, and I'm not a fish person unless it's covered in batter and deep fried at Long John Silver's <laughs> where you don't taste it. <laughs> Uh, well, James, that's not exactly the way I recommend it. I don't do it anymore, but that's how I used to do it. Especially when they had those Sunday yeah. all-you-can-eat for $10. Mm, <laughs> give me a plate of hush puppies, too. Carve up. <laughs> okay, J- James, you're giving him, you're giving him the, the dad vice unhealthy diet. Okay. Th- that's what got me to where I was so unhealthy. Part of it. <laughs> That's not what I do now. That's what I used to do that I learned. Not good anymore. (laughs) Fish is great. You want to eat fish because it has omega-3, which is a great fatty acid. You don't want the omega-6. Just like if you got to cook in any kind of oil, this is part of the Mediterranean diet, olive oil. It is the best cook in olive oil also give you omega-3 so fish is excellent and i'll just tell you as a little story i happen to have a place at the beach and i go fishing i cast my net and i just before i got on the show i i had a piece of fish that i actually fried up yesterday olive oil garlic onions perfect that's good stuff now all that part sounds great great. i just gotta get used (laughs) to the taste of fish and and my wife and loves Creole. salmon, and I buy, I skip yeah. it all the time, and I'm, I'm almost afraid to try it because I might like it. And be like all these decades that I've ignored salmon. <laughs> you so here's the thing, James. I put Creole seasoning on my fish. Uh huh. You can get any kind of fish that is well seasoned. Seasoning is the trick to anything that you're cooking. You add the right seasoning, you can really juice up the flavor of, of your foods. And I'm I'm all for putting all kinds of hot sauce and seasonings on, and that will make give you some excitement in your diet. <laughs> Very good. But but you know, fish fish is great. Fish is absolutely great. Um, now James uh, mentioned a little bit. So we talked about calories. I don't think you need to count calories, but you do need to try to decrease your portion size. We eat massive portions. Mm -hmm. James, I remember when I was in Europe, you go to Europe and you get these plates, especially a French restaurant, and you go, where's the food? (laughs) And of course you're paying, you know, you're paying like 50 bucks for a meal and there's nothing on the plate. And we are massively overeating. Our portions are just out of control. Get your portion size down. And there may be something, I don't think, and we talked about this before, that people say, we got to drink a lot of water for our kidneys. It's not true. There may be a benefit to drinking water, and I'm not against it. It may help fill you up. It may help decrease your appetite. But trust me, if you eat these whole foods, these plant-based foods, if you eat more of these fruits and vegetables, you're going to get filled up you're going to work at digestion you're going to lose weight it just makes sense because you because you're you're you have to burn calories to eat the food yeah (laughs) and you're going to lose weight (laughs) um so uh you you really need to stay away from the fast food and you need to stay away from the sodas if there's one thing that you can do to really help yourself and your family is try to change to a plant-based diet and stay away from the fast foods and stay away, especially from the, from the sodas. Yeah. My doctor, when I first went and saw my family doctor, it was don't be drinking your calories, Mm -hmm. no more sodas. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have some coffee, don't be loading it up with cream. And, and you know, he asked me, do you drink coffee? Oh yeah. I, I love coffee. What do you put in it? Oh, I get a caramel macchiato, extra, extra caramel, not just extra. And he's like, that's not coffee. That's, that's darkened sugar water. And I go, oh, and I asked him to put some whipped cream on top too. No, 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 no. Don't drink your calories. And I started right there. Stop drinking my calories. Stop going after these highly processed foods. 
uh, and eating color. That's what yeah. he told me. And I discovered, everyone knows, my favorite fruit. <laughs> I had to remember what was it, a fruit or a vegetable. Hard to believe I hardly ate these. Apples. I go through so many apples now. And I never realized there were so many of them and so many different textures and flavors and crunch and juiciness and all that. And it's been really easy for me to incorporate so much more plant-based foods into my diet. And I actually enjoy them. I I thought, I'm not going to like an apple unless it's covered in caramel and pecans or something like that with a stick in it. Like, no. <laughs> I, I'm a big salad fan, James. And I will go to the supermarket and I will pick up anything in, in the uh, fresh food section. I'll pick up green beans. I'll pick up green peas. I'll pick up cauliflower. I'll pick up broccoli. I'll take all kinds of forms of lettuce. And I, I love chopping that stuff up, putting it in a salad and eating it with some, you know, balsamic dressing. Yep. And, uh, you know. It is delicious. You get used to eating it and it fills you up because it's work. It's not most of these processed foods. They just, you don't even have to chew them. They just kind of just go right down into your gut. So you want to eat stuff that you can eat slowly that you have to chew. And that's going to take some work and it's going to give you, you know, all kinds of potential health benefits. Now, here's a good question just popped up. John asked, what about if you're skinny and need to, to gain weight? Okay. In my book, there is a website. And for those that, that tell you, don't remember, here's the book. Learn the facts right. about kidney disease. Links right up. Right up. There. <laughs> um, there is a website that you can go to that's in the chapter on my smart diet. And if you're serious, and I, and I honestly think that there are some people, believe it or not, and we got a good question, that need to gain weight. And that mm -hmm. is very important. We just obsess with being overweight. We are very prejudiced against people that are overweight. I mean, that's another one of the many things we discriminate against, which is really unnecessary because there are lots of people that do well, especially if you're older. If you are an older person like me, I'm 73, you are much better off having the extra weight. You will live longer. Don't be obsessing with your weight, especially as you get older. Now, it is important for some people to gain weight. And you can find the appropriate amount of calories, whether you want to gain weight or lose weight. And that will depend on how old you are. Because as you know, James, and I know, and anybody who's faced the decades, your metabolism slows down with age. Mine slowed so, down quickly in the last 10 years. Right. And there are young people, and I don't know if the uh, question came from a young person, but I know young people, and I was young once, and I could not gain a pound. I mean, I would eat everything. I would eat a whole cake with a gallon of milk and I would never gain a pound. So uh, there are recommended uh, amounts of calorie intake to gain weight, depending upon your level of exercise, your age, which will, which will give you a ballpark figure of just how high your metabolism is. So there are, there are things to do for that. And, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with eating the carbs if you need to gain weight. There's nothing wrong with eating the pastas. But when I make a pasta, I make a pasta sauce. What do I put in it? I put in avocados. I put in um, beans, gar garbanzo beans. I put in mushrooms. I put in olives. I put in artichokes. I put in crushed tomatoes. My mouth is watering. <laughs> It is delicious. I haven't so, eaten dinner yet. I, I, I go grocery <laughs> shopping after this. So I'm just mentally adding all these to my list. So, yeah, eat plenty of pasta. That'll help you gain weight. Eat more carbs. And like I said, there, there will give you some guidelines on a website in that chapter on my smart diet. Yep. And someone earlier asked 
about where they can learn about the SMART diet. Uh, Dr. Rowe talks about it in his book. There's a link right up here. You can go to Amazon, purchase this book, or go to your local bookstore and see if they have it or ask them, hey, can you order this book in? Um, it's very affordable, lots of great information. Mine, I knew you guys can, I don't know if you guys can see it. So many pages folded over <laughs> where I keep <laughs> going back here and look, and actually the book, the back is kind of curved from where I'll find something, look it up again, read about it. Lots of great information in here. Very easy to understand. That's the best part about this. It's not written and it's written by a doctor but it's not written for doctors. It's written for regular people like us. So it's easy to understand and it gets right to the point. Uh, when I was reading it the first time, I was like, holy cow, if I wrote a book, this is about what it would sound like. And that's where the smart diet is talked about in there. Thank you, James. Yeah, I, I was actually surprised to get the feedback like James and from many other people, from my colleagues, from patients who read the book, telling me, that I could write in a way that they can understand. Because I'm I, I'm not a great writer. I've never I've never been a great writer. But I tried to make it uh, readable, and and it's worked such that um with with James' encouragement, I'm working on a second book, which is going to be directed Yay. primarily for diabetics. But that's for another time. Oh, that could, that's badly needed. There's because there's there are a lot of diets out there, and I have a lot of dietitians that come on and we talk about stuff. And diabetes, you know, there's a lot of, but that's not good for a diabetic or with a diabetic, you got to do something different. Um, I do feel there is a need for more information, especially that's easy to yeah. understand yeah. to help diabetics figure out what to yeah. eat and what to do and what really matters. When should I really be worried? And that's one thing you guys, you're going to learn about in this book. I get, and this will make you laugh because you've seen it too, Dr. Rowe. I, I get emails and I'm not trying to make fun of anyone who sends me these, but I, I get, I get emails that say things like, um, I just got blood tests. My GFR is 87. My life is ruined. And I'm thinking like, no, your life isn't ruined. How old are you? That might even be normal. Dr. Rowe talks about that in here. When, when is a lower GFR? Okay. And he talks about how few people actually end up on dialysis. And if you do these things, you adjust your diet, your lifestyle, you start exercising, you keep an eye on your blood pressure and stuff, you're greatly increasing the opportunity you have to not need dialysis in your lifetime or to at least delay it <clears throat> greatly at time. Uh, so anyone looking for a good book to help you feel good, help you get through kidney disease, I definitely recommend this one. That's my, that's my plug for you. <laughs> Just a, a teaser for our discussion of what works to slow the decline of kidney function, which is one of the reasons why I'm writing, uh, trying to write this book for diabetics. These these books are, are are long projects, but there are new drugs for diabetics that we'll talk about when we talk about how to slow the decline of kidney function that are amazing. And I don't say take this lightly. They are almost miracle drugs, really big stuff. So you're going to hear about it a little bit on our talk about how to slow the decline of kidney function. Yep. Um, let's just touch on, time flies here when I'm with you, James. Let's just touch on the supplements. And um, Well, actually, we, before we get to that, yeah, there was ahead, a, a question oh. that I know a lot of people have. Uh, there it is, Matt. Perfect timing. Eggs. So a lot of people are worried about eating eggs. And when I was first diagnosed... I was eating egg whites is what I was rec told. Hey, eat egg whites to get started. Um, and then it got to the point where, hey, you can eat the whole egg. What's your thoughts on eggs? One of the best all around foods, eggs, oh, a yeah. great food. And again, if you've got CKD and everybody said, well, do I, what, what my cholesterol, my cholesterol. Uh, let me tell you, when I was a kid, going around the old folks, which they're probably younger than I am now, you know. <laughs> oh, what's your cholesterol? What's your cholesterol? We have proven drugs that will get your cholesterol down to seriously low levels. Don't worry about the cholesterol in your diet. You don't want to eat 
saturated fats. You don't want to eat lard. You don't want to eat butter, a lot of that. You want to try to have, you know, the a more omega-3, you know, you don't want to eat the harmful fatty acids. But eggs are a great food. I recommend eggs. It's great. It's a good source of protein. It's part of this diet. You're good with yep. it. And then one more question before we jump on the yeah, supplements. Sure. Earlier, you talked about animal protein and how it kind of causes hyperfiltration. puts your kidneys start working kind of over time when you eat that. Um, there's a question about also how it impacts the pH balance of your body. Okay. So in general, okay, so one of the things about uh, eating high-protein meals is that high protein meals will provide acids. There's part of the protein are acids. They're broken down into various types of acids. And that, as your kidneys get weaker, you may have trouble getting rid of acids. So eating a relatively low protein diet will decrease the amount of acids that you're going to produce. Um, and uh, the relatively low protein diet, the plant-based diet, will also be relatively low in phosphorus. Another bad thing, most foods that are prepared and are preserved have PHOS, added PHOS, mm -hmm. lousy stuff. Could, this stuff can really mess up your blood vessels. So that's another deal with um, uh, one of the things. And we didn't really mention, I guess we mentioned sodium uh, briefly, you want to try to decrease your sodium, especially if you're a heart failure patient, especially if you're hypertensive. Um, and um, so we were going to discuss supplements. Do you have another question before? Nope. I, I Actually, want... there is one yeah. question that's come yeah. up a few times, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, Dolly, this is your question about avocados. Um, <laughs> so many people are afraid and I, I get emails about this of avocados, of bananas, because of the potassium. Okay. And my recommendation, and we'll see what, what yours is, is, is portion control. You okay. need so some first, potassium, yeah. and you just work in the right portion. Yeah. yeah. Potassium, people obsessed with protein, people obsessed with potassium when they hear about, I've got a kidney problem. Do not obsess with either either whatever you, whatever you want to say it <laughs> um potassium is excreted by the amount you take in is the amount that's going to come out in the urine a lot of you are going to be on diuretics guess what you're going to be losing potassium that's not to say that kidney disease doesn't result in high potassium but it generally doesn't occur until you get down to 30 or less CKD4-5. Mm -hmm. There are certain situations where it can occur earlier, but you don't need to obsess with potassium. Now, on the other hand, if you are CKD4-5 and you're on this plant-based diet, you need to consult your dietitian because you may be inclined to start developing higher potassium and plant-based diets are very high in potassium. But for most of you, you don't have to worry until your kidney disease is advanced, especially if you're on diuretics, and you may need to actually take extra potassium so that you don't get sick from your diuretics that you're being treated with. Yep. Yeah, and I'm, I'm on a higher, we talked a little bit about this, you and I offline, I am on a higher potassium diet because there's, I still gotta get my thing looked at, doc. You tell me what you think it is. Um, I have problems not having enough potassium. If I don't eat, get some potatoes or things that ha or avocados or bananas, my potassium gets too low. Well, let me tell you something. I'll give you a quick anecdote because it's worth it. I'll huh. drive the point home. I had a patient that was seen in the emergency room that was given a diuretic and the patient, well, and, and, the, and the tradition and the standard is if you give a patient a diuretic, you got to check their potassium to not get it, let it get too low. And this will be another conversation we're gonna discuss down the road. Low potassium is very, very dangerous, just like high potassium. Mm -hmm. So you got to have it monitored, especially if you're on a diuretic. Um, 
if you're on the plant-based diet, you're going to do good things for your microbiome. I know people like to take supplements. They like to take things that they're going to affect your microbiome. But you can make your microbiome happy. All those billions of microorganisms in each one of our guts, they're all different. You can make them happy by eating a lot of plant-based foods. So buying any of these supplements, they're dangerous. They're potentially dangerous. They're not regulated by the FDA. They're not studied. Any drug that you take is studied by the FDA. There's an enormous amount of science that's required and a lot of work and a lot of money. But the supplements are not regulated. A lot of them can come from foreign countries. You don't know if they have potassium in them. Some of them have a lot of potassium. Some of them may interfere with your medications. The National Kidney Foundation in the U.S has a position paper on supplements and I encourage you to all read that, read, read that uh, paper from NKF, National Kidney Foundation. Yeah, and I know a lot of kidney patients, they're hoping for that magic pill that every other doctor, every other person in the world somehow overlooked except this one company that's promoting it, but still no one's heard about it, that will cure, restore, yeah. detox, flush our kidneys and whatever else rebuild i've heard all the phrases and yeah. for those that are out there thinking that you know maybe this one is the one they're not the only supplements i take are the ones my doctor recommends if i'm not getting enough d i take some d i take a renal multivitamin created by a company recommended by a lot of renal dietitians and doctors you guys know about i don't have a bottle here within arm arm's reach uh the pro renal plus d uh, I don't fall for all those fake, it's gonna help your kidneys. Most of them will do nothing except empty your wallet. And worst of all, they could cause worse kidney function. You yeah. think you're spending money to help yourself and you're hurting yourself. If you eat a plant-based diet, it is virtually impossible with rare exceptions to become vitamin de 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 deficient you're gonna get the vitamins and the minerals you need in plant-based diet. Most of the foods that you eat have no nutritional value. The fast foods, the foods that are not multicolored, the white breads, the white pastas. Eat things with color, they have nutritional value and they will give you the nutrients that you need, the vitamins and the minerals and the calories. Yep. Any last, so we're coming to the top of the hour. Any last minute things you want to mention about the smart diet? Oh, me. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you had That's... a question. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> there are a number of questions. Once you mention that, we'll, we'll hit a few of them. <laughs> well, look, I mean, I'm not smarter than anybody else. I mean, I just think you need to be reasonable. Don't obsess with any particular aspect of the diet. Use the diet as part of a lifestyle change to help you decrease your risk of getting a heart attack or a stroke or a bad outcome from hardening of the arteries, which comes along with kidney disease, have a relatively low protein diet, try to in encourage your family to stay away from the sodas and the fast food restaurants, try to stay away from the prepared foods, the frozen foods, and eat as many stuff that you can that's uh, from the, uh, you know, the, uh, the vegetable section of your yep. uh, kind of the, of your grocery the store. outside of most grocery stores less time in the middle where it's all in boxes more time on the outside yeah, where right, they right. they have to keep it fresh and 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 spray water on it and stuff like that exactly exactly <laughs> and you'll and you'll find you'll find stuff that you can you know that you've never eaten and they'll be tasty as heck you just got to prepare them right season them right and uh you'll enjoy it yeah. Now, before we go, Sal has a question here. Thank you, Sal, for posting it. That way I didn't have to scroll back. I was going to scroll back and try to find your question. Um, I've heard from a number of dietitians, and, I, and Sal is asking, can you verify if this is true, that when you're protein, or let's see, hold on. When you're eating animal-based protein compared to plant-based protein, your absorption at the plant base is lower of certain things like natural phosphorus, stuff like that, than in the um, animal-based products? I can't, I can't answer that part, but what I can say, as, as we talked about uh, earlier, when you're eating the plant-based proteins, 
your body has to burn energy just to get the foods digested. Now, do you do you uh, when you eat when you eat uh, a piece of steak? Yeah, that that takes I would guess some energy to digest, but that's not a fair comparison. We're talking about plant-based source of carbohydrates versus the processed carbs that take nothing to, to digest. The pastries, the cakes, the things with all the added sugars, the muffins, the bagels, the pizzas. You're just crying. Remember, I got to go grocery shopping. Don't get those <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> all right. Well, I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. If you'd like to learn more, I, Dr. Royal will be here pretty much every other week. His book, Learn the Facts About Kidney Disease. We got a link. Got to get my fingers right. Right up here. Go.dadvicetv.com slash book will take you to this book on Amazon. It's a great book. Um, it's fantastic for new kidney patients. Or if you're kind of lost and a little bit worried, you're feeling kind of alone, all sorts of great information. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the Dadvice TV YouTube channel. We are now under 3,000 subscribes away from hitting 100,000 subscribers, which <coughs> means YouTube will send me a silver play button and oh, I'll put it on the real wall that's behind me. That's a green screen right there. <laughs> but I'm gonna put it on my wall and I'm gonna be so excited to achieve that because it was less than two years ago that I started and my first goal was, let's see if I can get 1,000 subscribers. 1,000 people care about some guy talking about kidney disease and what's working and not working for him. Then I was excited to hit 10,000 and now I'm targeting 100,000. We are so close. So I encourage everyone, please subscribe. Help me hit that goal before the end of the year. I know we're gonna hit it before the end of the year. I wanna hit it as soon as possible so I can get my play button and just show it all. Say, look, I got this. <laughs> My wife's always like, you keep spending more money on your little video project. Because I keep buying more stuff. And my lease car is up next month. So I'm going to get one. I'm going to wrap it with Dad Vice TV. And she's like, I'm going to get that silver play button and show her, look, this is why I'm wrapping my car. She says she won't ride around with me in it. But that just means nobody will be eating in my car. and It'll stay clean. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Rowe, for your time tonight. It has been fantastic. And for everyone else, I'll see you next week in the next video. Bye, everyone. <laughs>